Matter of fact, if I tried to do any of that around a person, I would turn into, go into so much embarrassment, I would just basically shut down. So even doing it alone was terrifying for me. I was afraid, oddly enough, that somebody was gonna see me through a window. Somebody was going to walk in the room, even though I knew nobody was in the house. Somebody was gonna hear me if I yelled too loud in my house, outside the door and wonder what's going on. So I would do this facing my own embarrassment and shame. That's where I started. So in this video, I wanna talk about expression. And um, it was basically a question that we got from a, a viewer and he asked, how can I improve my ability to be expressive or my expression? It's something we work a lot with here because so many clients come to us and they're kind of muted or numbed out and uh, they don't know how to express really well. In other words, they don't know how to convey emotion, feeling, they don't know how to be a, a slightly bigger energy. They, they're just kind of shrunk down and pulled inside and they're like, hi, how you doing? You know, you're really pretty, I, I wanted to say hi. And there's a sense of meekness or or sometimes it's just there sometimes they're even there but they're just kind of numb there's no emotion coming across and i used to have this problem in, in spades i had it big time i was i was kind of always playing really careful i did it, i didn't want people to see me have an emotion i didn't want them to see me have feeling i would get embarrassed really easily so instead i just played really small i would shrink down i wouldn't be too loud if I spoke too loud, I'd be worried about who saw me or who heard me, what they were thinking of me. And so we take people out to work on this. And one of the most important things you can do is start to step into uh, letting other people see you and hear you a little bit at a time. This is how you start to change it. The first thing I did was I went in my house and I started expressing really loudly when nobody was home. I started yelling, jumping up and down, uh, playing out characters like I was playing charades because I couldn't do any of that stuff. Matter of fact, if I tried to do any of that around a person, I would turn into, go into so much embarrassment, I would just basically shut down. So even doing it alone was terrifying for me. I was afraid, oddly enough, that somebody was gonna see me through a window. Somebody was going to walk in the room even though I knew nobody was in the house. Somebody was gonna hear me if I yelled too loud in my house outside the door and wonder what's going on. So I would do this facing my own embarrassment and shame. That's where I started. The next thing I did was I got curious and I broke out a video camera and I put it on and I put it on me and I started doing all of this on camera. And that made it even more embarrassing because here was this device recording me doing this and what if somebody saw it? What if I, and I played with the idea of showing it to somebody but at first I couldn't even do that. And the next thing I would do is play it back and I'd watch it and I'd let myself get embarrassed watching myself act like an idiot, like a goofball, expressing, having emotions, having feelings. And it, would, it was really a weird internal experience as I started expressing more and more because so much shame was tied up in me being somebody that spoke loudly, that, that maybe could have been rude, that could have bothered somebody, that could have been seen by somebody at a distance because I was being too loud. I was always trying to disappear. So I played the camera several times and I would do it again. I would, I would express more and more and I kept doing it. Now the key here for me, especially today, looking back on what I did, was that I needed to be a really aware of my whole body when I did it. Rather than just yelling and screaming unconsciously, what I was doing was uh, uh, working on making sure that I felt from head to toe why I did it. You see, the dancing monkey loses awareness of their body and tries to entertain others. I wanted to maintain awareness of what I was feeling and express for me, not for somebody else. So I kept watching the videos over and every day I would get a little more comfortable seeing who was on the video. The next thing I did was start showing some of the easier videos to watch to other people. And then as I got more comfortable, I started showing them crazier videos. And eventually I worked my way up to being expressive around people, being able to play games where you have to express, uh, like charades, um, being able to do karaoke in front of other people for me, not for them, but for me. And this became another part uh, of the whole process of expressing. Then I started to go out in public. And I started to ask myself, what can I do in public to get used to expressing and expressing my emotions? One of them was dancing in public, going down to, in Santa Monica at the time, Third Street Promenade, and saw there was a singer singing music and maybe I would dance in public to the singer. Maybe I would sing along a little bit. Um, another thing I did was I would have loud conversations with people walking down the street, really loud so that everybody could hear. 
what I started having clients doing eventually, and I started doing myself, was having loud conversations while people were 10, 20 feet away from me, walking down the street, walking, like people are in between us and we're yelling over them, having conversations about all kinds of stuff, about girls we like, things that would embarrass me, learning to just not give a fuck what people thought of me. And this started to allow me to uh, connect and relate to other people more. This started to allow me to connect and relate to other people more because I started to get more free with my emotions and emotional expression. I stopped giving a, a damn what people thought of me. So when I was hanging around with somebody saying something as simple as I like you, it had so much more emotion and expression than it used to have. In the past, I might say, you know, hi, I, I, I like you. And after I got used to expressing, I might look at a girl and say something like, hi, I like you because I owned it more. I wasn't afraid. Walking down the street, um, if I saw somebody I liked, I'd say, hey, what's up? And I had more freedom just saying hi to a person walking down the street because I didn't care what the people around her thought about me anymore. So with time, this started to birth the high exercises that we use today because we started to realize that a lot of people have trouble with expression. The high exercise is really about expression. And so one day I went out to say hi to literally 100 people. I just walked down the street and every person that passed me, I try not to skip anybody, go, hey, how's your day going? Hey, how are you? Hey, what's up? Happy Friday, happy Saturday, whatever it was. Oh, that hat looks great. And I would just keep saying hi till I got to 100. Now the key here, again, became more and more that I needed to relax in my body. I needed to say it loud enough so the people around them could hear. I needed to say it uh, in a way where I felt open and friendly and happy. And what I began to notice that the nature of my expression completely affected the person I said hi to. If I was grumpy, they would typically pull away and close off. If I was open and happy, they would start opening up. If I felt really high in my body and I was racing, I'd be like up here like, hey, how you doing? They would kind of want to run away from me. If I was low and relaxed and I just felt comfortable, but still expressive, hey, how you doing? I was opening for my heart. I had a good open heart. I could feel the warmth there. People would say hi back to me a lot. Some people would even want to talk to me. And it was such a contrast. When I was disconnected, the majority of people would almost ignore me and pull away from me and look at me like I was a weirdo, which was also a great part of learning to not give a fuck. Then when I started to get connected, started to open, the majority of people would at least smile, nod, uh, say hi back. Some people would want to talk to me. Some people would say, would, would really connect with me like 70, sometimes up to 70% of the people would really acknowledge me because I felt so open. They were literally drawn to me. It felt natural to say hi. Didn't feel awkward or weird. Again, when I was disconnected, it felt awkward and weird. What's this weirdo doing? When I was connected, oh, what a nice guy. And this literally changed based on how I was feeling and how much I was feeling in my body. We talk a lot about embodiment here. And so learning to relax and feel my whole body, not think, but just feel my whole body while I talked while feeling good, was really the key to being that expressive and not giving a damn what anybody thought of me all at the same time. So these are just some examples of learning to be more expressive. This was kind of my progression getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Beyond that, it started to grow into actually stopping people, which is actually getting into meeting people and socializing, stopping them on the street, having a conversation. And that's kind of the natural progression from there. But just as far as expression goes, this is this is the e one of the easiest ways to do it. Some of the other things you can do is you can get really inventive. When you start to relax in your body some more, um, maybe you, if you play an instrument, go out and play an instrument on the sidewalk one day for people. If you uh, don't play an instrument, you just want to do something, do a free hug sign. Take the you know the, the free hug sign and stand out there and give people hugs for a day and just notice what that feels like. Um, if you're a singer, go out and sing for people. If you want to go out in the street and just dance, try that for a little bit. Try different things that, that force people to look at you and keep working on relaxing more and more and more until you're just relaxed and you're not looking for validation, but you're also not not looking for validation. You're just kind of having fun for you. That is the real key. And there's so many things you can do at that point. It's amazing. If you want some uh, more information on the free hug sign, you can find a million YouTube videos on that one. That's a great one to do. There's also a great move, uh, a music video by the Sick Puppies which really shows that it can motivate you a lot and it shows the progression of the free hug sign uh, over a period of time, which is uh, just look it up for uh, free hug sick puppies. Um, now, with all that said, I, th I think there's a lot of material here for you to work with, to work on your expression. And, uh, and it all started with me expressing alone, privately, learning to get comfortable with myself 
and then I built it up from there. So I want to invite you into starting this process today. If you have a problem in this area, this alone can be life changing if you go through this process, let alone meeting women, dating women, any of that. Just go through this process and watch how your life radically changes. And I really want to hear about it if you do this. Get started right away and I want you to comment below. Matter of fact, keep commenting below. Every time you get to the next level, come back and comment some more. Well, if you start out alone and you're <clears throat> and you work your way up to videos and you and comment at each stage, let us know what you're doing. Let us know what you want to learn more about. If you're stuck in a particular area, maybe we can make a video about that particular area. Maybe at some point we'll actually do a video of somebody doing it. Who knows? But comment below based on what you want to see in this area. We want to hear it. That's how we figure out what videos to bring you in the future. Also, make sure to like if you like this video. Um, your likes are really important to us. They really help us to build the channel and they help us to produce more videos for you. Make sure to subscribe if you haven't subscribed and make sure to hit that notification button. That's so important for, to make sure that you see every video that comes out. And uh, with that said, remember, only the confident really live. See you in the next video.